Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to build the buckle cusp bridges of these teeth. As we notice that we already built the cones, so we have to make sure that these cones point to the right directions. So the first step is we're going to start building the uh, buckle cusp bridges. We're going to start with the mesial buccal cusp bridge of the buccal cusp of the uh, mandibular first premolar. So what we're going to do is we're going to build it almost into occlusion and then little by little we add the wax so that it touches the opposing dentition just a little bit. So let's sharpen this picture a little. And then let's continue with the distal buccal cusp bridge of the buccal cusp of the mandibular first premolar. So we kind of build it up arbitrarily somewhat so it's close to the occlusion. If it's not touching then we're going to add a little more to it. Now since we built the cones about a half a millimeter shy of the occlusion, we can add a little bit of a dot to the buccal cusp tip so that we have a good contact. But we don't want to build it up too much because then it's going to get, to get smashed and then you gotta scrape it off and kind of clean it up. As we saw here, we built up the uh, cusp tip a little too much, so we had to remove a little bit. Then once we removed it, we'll have to go back with the, with the heater and kind of smooth it out. Okay, the next one we're going to build is the uh, mesial cusp bridge of the second premolar. So we have to uh, make sure that we don't build it too high again. And this way, we don't have to smash the uh, little ridge that we're building. As we can see, the uh, mesial 
marginal ridges, touch that mesial cusp ridge. Now we're going to start waxing the distal cusp ridge of the second premolar on the mandibular. So again, we have to wax nice and slow, kind of eyeball it at first. Make sure it is not too high. So the distal cusp bridge is allowing us to shape that cusp so it looks like a tooth. And we add little by little Eventually when we get to uh, the contact, it's going to be just a slight little dot. The contact is a little too hard, we can always take a little bit away. It's just very important not to overdo it with the contacts because then when we close the articulator, it will break the wax. When you close the articulator, it should sound like stone against stone not wax against wax. You'll be able to tell the difference. Alright, so the next one is the molar. We'll do all of the cusp ridges. The mesiobuccal cusp, the distal buccal cusp, and the distal cusp. Here we will have to be extremely careful. These uh, cusp bridges are very small, so we have to pay extra attention to the heat of the wax because it can very easily melt it. Okay. So 
so be patient, just do it slowly, build it up right exactly into a fusion. You happen to melt a cusp here and there, you can just reduce the wax and add a little more. And once you do a few of these, it's going to go much faster. Okay, so we're going to start with the marginal ridges now. You can start either in the mesial of the first premolar, or you can start with the distal. It really doesn't matter. Then we're going to continue straight into the distal cusp bridge of the distal lingual cusp. Then the mesial cusp bridge. distal cusp bridge of the mesiolingual cusp and then we're going to flow it right into the mesial marginal ridge I 
I just remember how the uh, cusp is supposed to shape, be shaped. So we just continue because bridges flowing into the marginal ridge. Notice how everything goes right to our areas that we are aiming for. So we're more or less mimicking the adjacent tooth. But we just have to remember that that's a first molar, so we have the distal cusp. Make sure when you put the uh, marginal ridges against the adjacent tooth, try to separate them so they don't look like one ridge or the teeth melting into each other. Now once we're finished we can actually increase the area on the inside in the occlusal surface so that we can make some more room to do our uh, triangular ridges. When we are doing the first and second premolars we have to remember the anatomy of the first and second premolar. The second premolar we have two distinct cusps on the lingual surface, the mesial cusp being the larger one. On the first premolar we have the distal cusp being the larger one, and the mesial cusp being a almost non-existent vestigial cusp. Vestigial means something that's already disappearing that was there before maybe during evolution. So the mesial cusp is very small and what it does is it allows the posterior teeth to kind of blend in with the anterior teeth so that when the tongue glides over the lingual surfaces of those anterior teeth it doesn't feel as much of a bump in the transition from the anterior to the posterior. So we'll try out and see, make sure that uh, the wax isn't too high. Will we continue to the next step? These are the uh, contact areas there, on the lower and the upper. We have the contact areas marked in red. Make sure everything is pointing in the right direction. Now if we can, we can put our contact in the distal marginal ridge or the distal fossa also. I'm gonna use blue wax in this case to start waxing the buccal areas of the cusps.
So we just fill it up right to the surface of the buckle of each tooth. Once we fill it up, we can use our carver and smooth it down so that there's no transition between the wax and the stone. They should be all at the same level. So when you run your instrument on top of it, it should feel all as one surface. If you made too much contact between the teeth, you can always carve in between to achieve the proper embrasures. Remember the wax has to follow the contours of the buckle surfaces. And then it turns in on the interproximal and will create the interproximal embrasures on the buckle. Or I should say bu um, buckle embrasures. That's the proper terminology. wax we may have dripped on the stone take a little bit out of the occlusal area so that we can fit the triangular ridges a bit more easily now we're going to add some wax to the lingual surfaces Bring that wax out. To the level of the tooth. carving it down then we'll be ready to start the triangular ridges you can refer to this as the fish mouth for obvious reasons so at this point we're ready start the marginal ridges. Again, let's make sure that everything is completely closed. So you should hear a little bit of a stone touching together when you bring the occlusal surfaces together into occlusion. If you don't hear anything, then that means the wax might be a little bit too high. So You'll have to adjust the occlusion a little bit on the wax. We're better off to do it now because if we do it after the uh, placement of the triangular ridges, then we won't know where to remove wax from in order to put the models back into occlusion. So we'll be uh, kind of shooting in the dark where to take it, to take it from the uh, cusp tips or take it from the triangular ridges. Okay, let's refine our work and then we'll start with the triangular ridges. 